In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of security testing that are, are testable on the Certified Ethical Hacker exam and just the types that you can do in general as an ethical hacker. So security testing is the primary role of an ethical hacker. You're hired by a company to do penetration testing and security testing across their enclaves. Testing ranges in complexity and scope as we've talked about before based on the requirements of the organization and the information system. You can do things like ethical hacking, penetration testing, vulnerability assessments, vulnerability testing, network testing and evaluation, red teaming or blue teaming. All these are different types of different security tests that we do. And in general, they have a couple of main categories that we're going to talk about. There's three different modes that we talk about with security testing. One is white box, one is gray box, the other is black box. Security testing occurs under one of those three models. The type of model is going to be determined by the amount of knowledge that you, the tester, have about the system that you're going to be testing. The decision on what type is made is going to be based on a time allocation, a budget allocation, or other organizational considerations. Sometimes a white box is right, sometimes a black box is right, sometimes a gray box is right. It just depends on your needs. So we'll talk about those three types now. First, we're going to talk about a white box test. What is a white box test? Well, it means you have full knowledge of the system. The tester is given full details of the system. You might have network maps. You might have router configurations. They're going to give you usernames and passwords to use, whether they're as admins or users, depending on the test. And they'll even tell you software versions. So all of this information is given to you. So I might be told, hey, this company is using Windows 2012 servers. Your username and password for this is going to be tester, and the password is tester1. And that's going to give you full admin rights across the domain. Have fun testing, right? Um, and, and they give you all that information. Here's the IP scope and all of that. This allows the tester to spend more time probing vulnerabilities and less time in the information, recon information gathering or reconnaissance phases. This is going to, in most tests, if I'm doing a black box test, black box test, it takes me 80 to 90 percent of my time is in the information gathering and reconnaissance phases, trying to figure out how I'm going to break in. With white box, they've already given me a roadmap and said, hey. Here's what we got. Feel free to scan away and find something, right? And I already know where I'm going. Pros, less time and is less costly. So for an organization on a budget, white box may be a good idea. The cons, this is not very realistic. This is not going to give you the perspective of an outside entity or an outside attacker coming at you. If random, you know, Joe Schmo on the street who wants to attack Coca-Cola and hack them, white box is not what he would be doing. He would be doing more of a black box, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it does have its benefits, again, less timely, less costly. I spend a lot more time doing my penetration, less time doing my research. Gray box. What is a gray box? Well, it's kind of halfway between black and white. Uh, that's why it's gray. It's a partial system. So I might be given some details like, hey, here's some network maps or some configurations. I might give you user credentials but not admin credentials. Or I might tell you, hey, we're using Windows, but I'm not going to tell you what version of Windows, right? So I give you some information, but not all. It's useful to simulate something like an insider threat or an insider attack on a network. What is that? Well, if I have a company um, and my uh, administrative assistant got mad at me because I, she heard that I was going to fire her in three weeks. She decided, well, I'm going to screw this company before I leave. What access can she do with her, use, her normal user accounts and see what damage she can do? It's a good compromise between white and black boxing. Uh, it's easier to perform, uh, the, the cons are that it's easier to perform spear phishing attacks and other social engineering um, by doing a gray box because I already have insider knowledge. So it makes it easier for, it, it's a con for the organization but a pro for me, right? It makes my job easier because I already know a lot about the organization. The con is it's not nearly as realistic. So if I'm gonna do something like a social engineering test and I'm gonna do a social, uh, when I'm gonna test as by spear phishing people, I'm going to be a lot more successful because I know so much about the company because I have that partial knowledge. So that can be a con. Um, it's, it's usually is a fairly good compromise though between a white and a black box. Black box. So black box is where you have no knowledge of the system. You get no information, no help. Basically you sign a contract that says perform black box testing. Um, you know, our network range is from somewhere in this scope. We are in the 192.x.x.x scope, have fun, right? Um, you got to be careful here to make sure you're only attacking who you're supposed to be attacking, right? Um, attacker, the, the, the tester is going to attack from over the network, so over the internet, coming over the internet, going through the firewalls, and utilizes a lot of different attacks to get a foothold in the network. 
I may have to do social engineering through spear phishing. I may have to just do regular phishing. I may just have to throw random exploits, see what sticks, right? That would be a really bad way to test, but you know, I've seen some people try to do stupid things like that. Um, but it really is going to fully simulate this outsider attack, right? It's it's as if Joe Schmo off the street decided he had a hard on to go after your company, uh, and he's going to attack you, right? That hacker X is going to come after you for some reason. This is the view they're going to get. They know nothing about you, and they've got to do all the reconnaissance. Like I said, 80 to 90 percent of the upfront work is going to be open source intelligence, social engineering, and information gathering before you ever start the attack. Cons takes a lot of time and costs a lot more. So if I have to do all that work and it takes me 80 or 90 percent of the time, and you only give me a three month window to do this in, I might spend two and a half months trying to figure out where to attack and how to attack, giving me only a couple of weeks to actually do the attack. You're going to get a lot less bang for your buck. White box, you're going to get a you're going to get a lot more penetration, a lot more on net access, but you don't get as much of the open source knowledge and see what's really out there from the bad guy perspective. So again, gray box tends to be a pretty good compromise and that's what most people end up doing. So in addition to that, we have three types of security testing, right? Uh, those are the three models. Now we have three types. The three types are high level network assessments. We call these a level one assessment. They are a top down assessment of the organization and they basically are looking at the policies, procedures, and guidelines. This does not include any hands-on testing. So it's kind of like a tabletop, if you will. I might come in to your organization as a consultant. I'll look at your level, for a level one assessment, I'll look at your paperwork and your procedures and go, hey, based on the way I see things, I see some vulnerabilities here, here, and here. Maybe the way you're onboarding your employees isn't good, or the way that you're checking out employees when they quit isn't good. Uh, and here's some things that we can tighten up. Second thing you have is a network evaluation. That's a level two assessment. This is going to have hands-on testing in addition to that policy review that we just talked about. We're going to do things like vulnerability scanning, uh, vulnerability assessments, and this is usually an inside look. So we're going to do this as if I was a system administrator. So again, more of a con uh, consulting gig on the inside of the network. Penetration testing, normally I'm going to come in from the outside. It's known as a red team test, and it is uh, uh, where we actually compromise the network as an attacker would. This is really where we're going to get our black box testing and our gray box testing and even our white box testing from. When we start talking network evaluations and high level assessments, it's really a white box test at that point. We've already been given all the credentials and everything we need. Penetration testing is level three. That's where we start having a choice in what we're going to do. Is this good, better, or best, each of these three? Well, each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. Um, network evaluations, a lot of times you'll hear that called blue teaming. It's kind of an assist. I come in to help your system administrators bring them up to the next level. Uh, penetration test, that's the red team. I come in from the outside and try to beat them down and try to break through their defenses. So it's more of a sport. Um, both are good. Both have their pros and negatives, their pros and cons. So that is the idea of our security testing. Give you a general overview and uh, fairly shortly we're going to get some more hands-on actually start doing stuff after we've uh, established this initial foundational knowledge that we're working on. Again, uh, leave some comments if you're interested. Uh, let us know what, what's good, what's bad, uh, where we can help you, what things you're interested in seeing next, and what hands-on you'd like to see. Thank you.